Hello, kids. Hello, boys and girls. Hello, parents. Uh, guess what? Today is the first day of which month? May. <laughs> Today is the first day of May, and we are so glad that we are counting down 2020. I can't believe it. When did it start? We just had Happy New Year yesterday. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm like 85. Oh no. But we are grateful that we are alive. We are thankful. We are healthy. We are thankful for all the things that have been happening and for safety. Uh, I'm thankful that even through this lockdown, boys and girls, we have an opportunity to uh, share this time together to read and to learn one or two lessons. And so, Jed. Remind us, what are you reading again? I'm reading Hurricane Betsy Hurricane. by Mallory Black. Okay, and Jamie? Science Geek Sam. Science Geek Sam. And so um, the girls are going to continue on their reading log <laughs> because it's a reading book log. And so we'll see how we get on. Okay, come on, Jed. Um, where are we? Yeah. So she got the hamburger and then. What's the matter, Betsy? Is that hamburger too much for you? Asked Grandma Liz. Oh no, Grandma. Betsy was like, I'm just eating it slowly. That I can remember what every mouthful tasted like. Grandma Liz and Mum exchanged a look. Hmm. Although Grandma said, what am I going to do? But Betsy as she shooed on yet another mouthful. She was stuck. If she had just one more bite, she, had, she would pop like a balloon. But she stopped now. Everyone would say, we told you so. Then Betsy had an eat. She arranged her paper napkin on her lap to cover her skirt. She broke up a bit of her burger. Then she pretended to put her the piece of burger in her mouth, but she didn't really. While she was pretending to chew, Betsy waited until no one was looking and dropped a little bit of burger from her hand into her napkin. Really? Who does that in this house? Not me. Oh. Not me. You? Are you? No, not me. Didn't do it again. Do you remember it's a high food? Uh, oh, no. oh, yeah. <laughs> now I got to yeah, come on. As soon as the coast was clear, as soon as the coast was clear, Betsy did the same thing again. She broke off the, she broke off a piece and pretended to eat it, but instead dropped it into her lap. Ten pieces later, there was no more hamburger left in her hand, but lots of pieces of hamburger sat. Lots of lots of pieces of hamburger sat on the napkin in her lap. Betsy folded up the napkin until none of her, uh, none of the hamburger could be seen. Betsy picked up the chocolate milkshake and took a long drink. Pretending to eat hamburger was a very thirsty work. Well done, Betsy, Mum said, surprised. I must admit, I just must admit, but I didn't think you could do it. You could do it. I told you I was hungry, said Betsy. Your appetite has doubled overnight, and so has your stomach, said Grandma Liz. Okay, oh. you want us to stop? Because we have Aurelia. So, <laughs> boys and girls, we have a reader with us today. Aurelia is going to be reading for us today, and we're going to turn our laptop to you guys so you can see us. And Jamie, I want you to do that. And... Um, if you're just joining us, we are reading with Joan and we have I can't a hear you. Her name is Aurelia. She's a pretty secret lovely, island amazing island. girl. Island. <clears throat> the secret Should island. Should I put a timer on? Yeah, lift up. Yes, you can. Definitely. Oh yeah, come on, start. <laughs> 
Good. Good idea. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys seeing her? Okay, come on. Oh yeah, good to go. Let's go. Chapter one. The beginning of the adventures. Mike, Peggy and Nora were sitting in the field, talking together. They were very unhappy. Nora was crying and would not stop. As they sat there, they heard a low call. Kiri! There's Jack, said Mike. Dry your eyes, Nora. Jack will cheer you up. A boy came round and sat down by them. He had the faintest brown of fairy and bright blue eyes that shone with mischief. Um, hello, he said. What's up, Nora? Crying again? Yes, said Nora, wiping her eyes. Aunt Harriet yelled at me six times this morning because I didn't wash the curtains well enough. Look! She showed him her hands, which were red and sore from all the washing. It's a shame, said Jack. If only our father and mother were here, they wouldn't let us live like this, said Mike. But so I don't believe they'll ever come back now. How long is it since they've been gone? asked Jack. It's over two years now, said Mike. Dad built a fine new aeroplane, you know, and he set off to fly to Australia. Mother went with him because she loves flying too. They got nearly there and then no more was heard of them. And I know Aunt Harriet and Uncle Henry think they will never come back again, said Nora, beginning to cry. Once more, oh, beginning to cry once more. Or they would never treat us as they do. Don't cry anymore, Nora, said Peggy. Your eyes will get so red and horrid. I'll do the washing instead of you next time. Jack put his arm around Nora. He liked her best of them all. She was the smallest, although she was Mike's twin. She had a little face and a head of black curls. Mike was exactly like her, but bigger. Peggy had blonde hair and was a year older. Nobody knew how old Jack was. He didn't know himself. He lived with his grandfather on a tumble-down farm and worked as a hard man. Well, worked as hard as a man. Although he wasn't much bigger than Mike, he had made friends with the children as they wandered through the fields. He knew how to catch rabbits. He knew how to catch fish in the river. He knew where the best nuts and blackberries were to be found. And he knew everything. The children thought even the names of all the birds flew about the hedges and the difference between a grass snake and an adder. And all things like that. Jack was always dressed in raggedy things, but the children didn't mind. His feet were bare and his legs were scratched with brambles. He never grumbled, he never whined. He made, of a he made a joke of everything, and he had been a good friend to the three miserable children. And should I keep going? Yep, if it's five minutes. Okay. Ever since Aunt Harriet made her mind up that Mummy and Daddy wouldn't come back, she has been perfectly horrid, said Nora. And so has Uncle Henry, said Mike. We none of us go to school now. And I have to help Uncle in the fields from morning to night. I don't mind that, but I do wish Aunt Harriet wouldn't treat the two girls so badly. They are not very old, and she makes them do all the work in the house for her. I do every bit of the washing now, said Nora. I wouldn't mind the little things, but the sheets are so big and heavy. And I do all the cooking, said Peggy. Yesterday I burnt a cake because the oven got too hot and Aunt Harriet sent me to bed for the rest of the day without anything to eat at all. I climbed through the window and gave her some bread and cheese, said Mike. 
And uncle caught me and shook me so hard that I couldn't stand up afterwards. I had to go without supper, and my breakfast this morning was only a small piece of bread. We haven't had any new clothes for months, said Peggy. My shoes are dreadful, and I don't know what we shall do with them when we because none of our coats will fit us. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you, Aurelia. That was beautiful, effortless reading. That was beautiful. Um, Kate, I hope you enjoyed her reading. And um, if you want to continue to listen to her story, um, you she'll be back next week, Friday, to continue from where she stopped. And so, Aurelia, we're looking forward to seeing you next week, Friday to continue to let us know and read for us from where you stopped today. I hope you enjoyed it, did you? Did you guys enjoy it? Yeah, so um, so back to Jamie, can you please give us a little bit of instrument okay. so we can relax before the next read? <laughs> okay, come on. So what are you playing today? God save the queen. God save the queen. Okay, come on. Oh, yeah, we need to pray for our queen. Come on. one today you guys are really so good today oh well done oh did i bring a cup no. oh no <laughs> all right so that's good we'll do that later can you do some reading now okay now so can you do your reading now okay. so where are we reading where are we stopped any summary mm. for us what's up oh yesterday's one was quite technical mm. but we got a winner though we got some of the answer, the question. Auntie Agatha, you are brilliant. Thank you for listening to us. You got the answers yesterday. Quite right, all the answers. So we give you thumbs up from reading with Joan. Okay, so Sunday. Okay. This morning over breakfast, I told our, my parents, Uncle Jack thinks that apes are our second cousins. Dad nearly chokes on his coffee. Does he really say that? Yes, I said. You're so gullible, Sam, said Lottie. I stuck my tongue out at her. He was dead serious, you know. Mum shook her head. Don't be silly. Jack was only joking. Or his brains have run wild, Dad said. That is possible. If you get too caught up in science, you could develop some strange ideas. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> Are you developing something? <laughs> okay, go away. Later, I WhatsApped Uncle Jack. Sam. Hi, Uncle Jack. I thought the whisper boat was quite epic, but it was a shame we didn't see a single otter on our bird. Hi, Sam. Yes, that was bad luck. There must have been quite a few around. Maybe Auntie Janet was just a bit too loud. But I guess you were joking when you said apes are our second cousins. Jack. Strictly speaking, we aren't second cousins. But if you go back many, many generations, so six million years of back. So the mother of your mother, of your mother, of your mother, times half a million, then we would end up with the same mother. Oh dear. Kids, do you agree with that? <laughs> I don't oh, know. Child. I don't know. Yeah, come on. <laughs> so we have the same great, 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 great grandmother. So we are kind of very, very, very distant relatives. What? Sam. Sam. So your granny was an ape. Sam. With a tail. Sam. He swung around trees. <laughs> Jack. Haha, <laughs> you're turning it into a great story. But it is indeed true that we are very, very distant relatives. 
Did you know that there are clues in your own body? Huh? That sound. Jack, your tailbone, you know, the little bone at the bottom of your backbone. Sam, I fell on it once. Jack, that must have hurt. Your tailbone holds several muscles together, especially in your bottom, and it enables your bones to move. It also protects your spine when you sit down, a bit like a car bumper. But, compared to how, to how it supported your ancestors' tails, your tailbone isn't that useful. Really? Yes. Sam, hang on. Mum says that is nonsense, Jack. What? What is nonsense? Sam, and that I mustn't believe everything you say. Mum says God made Adam. That's what the Bible says. Jack, yes. Did you know that Adam is the Hebrew word for man? Jack, God made mankind and the rest, of course. Sam, but you're saying we are just animals. Yes, that's right. Our cells, our DNA, our proteins. In that sense, we are no different from animals. Sam. Huh? But we can think. Jack, correct. I'll send you an email. I'm not that fast with my index finger. Index finger? Ha ha, do you use WhatsApp with your index finger? Sam, try typing with your thumbs, it's much faster. Now an email. From Professor Jack Scott McNeil to Sam Billington, subject differences between humans and animals. So let's listen to the differences between humans and animals. Okay, come on, keep going. Hi Sam, you were absolutely right. You can do loads of things that animals aren't able to do. You can think about all sorts of things. How to install a plumbing system, whether Granny Sue is being cared well for well enough in her nursing home, what time it is in New York right now, whether the earth revolves around the sun, we can think about ourselves. How we are feeling right now, for example. Happy? Silly? Sad? Can you think like that, kids? I'm not silly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, silly is the biggest one for you, right? <laughs> okay, come on. Whether we are in love, what other people think Ooh, of us. Really? Whether or not we are brave enough to go to the dentist. Jedi, are you brave enough to go to the dentist? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, yeah. and there are other things people are good at we have a language to express exactly what we mean to say we can make clever tools wheels cars computers we take good care of other people for instance people with a disability some animals are also very clever crows for instance and dolphins they have a very pretty well-developed language they use to talk to each other. And sometimes animals look after other animals that are drowning, injured, or otherwise in danger. And there are some animals that use tools. On YouTube, you can watch videos about sea otter using a sharp rock to crack open a shell. Kids, do you want to go and watch that? Tell them. Watch a video on YouTube of a sea otter yeah. using a sharp rock to crack open a shell. A shell. That's an interesting one to go and investigate. And you tell us tomorrow what you discovered, will you? Yes. yes. Okay, come on, let's go. Let's go on. Shell. Wait and or or a crow tossing nuts onto the road, waiting for cars to drive over them and crack them open. Oh, oh, good. There's still more. Is this still more there? Okay, yeah, let's we'll finish it. Finish it then. Have you ever seen this fil film? A thirsty bird finds a way to make people give him a drink. I think we should post this into the comments. Okay, like, okay. We'll post it. Videos. We'll post it, yeah. Because there are some videos. Link there, okay. So animals can use language, look after each other, and work with tools. So how are people different? How are you different from a dolphin? I think there is one very important difference. You didn't think about yourself, about time, about why you were alive, about who's made everything. You can know God. That is what makes you special and unique. There isn't a single animal species that is religious. I think God once wanted people to come into being. People to share his love with. People who wanted to live in the world with him. I believe 
that God made this happen through an evolutionary process. 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 <laughs> okay, great reading, Jenny. Yes, Uncle Jack. Okay, great reading, Jenny. And there's something interesting in the last page, kids, and that's your assignment today. Mm -hmm. We are still going to ask the question. Oh, assignment. But I, yeah, but I have a little assignment for you. Where are we, Jenny? What did you guys read? Okay. Yeah. I have a little assignment. It says that you can think about yourself, about time, about why you are alive, about everything. Now that you are uh, on a lockdown, kids, can you take a sheet of paper and write something about yourself, about what you like, about everything you think you can be, and think about why you're unique and special? And can you send it to us? Tell your mom and dad to send it to us so we can read it on the program. What do you think? Is that a good idea, kids? Just, it won't take you more than five, ten minutes. If you can't write, ask mommy and dad to help you to write. But it has to be from you. Think about yourself, why you are alive, why you like something, why you think God made you, why you're unique and special, and something important, what you want to be. It will be interesting to have this interactive community of children sharing their you know, views about who they are and why they are alive. And so don't be afraid. What's your question, madam? My question is what? Hmm. What body part mm -hmm. did Sam fall on? What body part did Sam fall on? Hmm. Somebody's asking. Come on. Uh oh. Uh oh. You didn't raise up your hand. Let's give it to uh -oh. Chubuma. Yeah. Thank you, Tam. Oh yeah, Chubuma. No, you can't do it now because she knows. Oh okay. yeah. What did you say? Tailboard. He fell on his tailboard. Okay, let's take a question from Jed. Um, can somebody tell me where Hurricane Betsy was hiding uh food? Does Tamara know? Does I know? Does Tamara know? Tamara okay. is up and says uh, Where? In her napkin. Oh in the napkin, well done, you were listening. Cool. Okay, what did Aya say? Let's see Aya. Well, no, wait, wait, yeah, okay. Where? In a kitchen towel. That's good. That's good. Well done, kid. That means that you are all listening. I'm so proud of you because we love reading with kids and we love reading with our parents and we enjoy the music. We enjoy the talk we have. Now, one lesson I'm taking from Hurricane Betsy. Kids, don't hide your food. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Jamie tortured me for years. Oh, she, she doesn't do it anymore now. Well, please, don't hide your food. You know, there was a day I was cleaning under the fridge. Oh, that, oh, that day. Oh, oh my goodness. Mess. It was a mess. Jamie has been hiding all the food there like a rabbit. But now, she doesn't do it anymore. She's now all grown, big girl. But, you know, we just had an example today. So it's all things that happened to us as kids that we are reading from Orike Betsy. And I hope you're enjoying the story just like you are. Um, I'm enjoying it because I can see a lot of my girls manifesting in Orike Betsy. And I know you kids at home, <laughs> a lot of the things that are there, you do it too. But I want you to enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll see you tomorrow on Reading with Joan. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Thank you, Aurelia. You are beautiful. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.